Are you tired of screwing around with plastic extruders that just don't cut it? Or how about ones that just have weak springs? I've got our version two of our aluminum extruder here. I'm gonna show you how to assemble this right now. When you get the extruder from us, you're gonna get a bag of parts just like this. So we're gonna show you how to go from here to here in just a couple of minutes. The tools you'll need to complete this upgrade are as follows. A set of pliers, a 1.5 millimeter hex wrench, two millimeter hex wrench, 2.5 millimeter hex wrench, and a three millimeter hex wrench. These sizes all come with your 3D printers and the ones included with your machine will work fine. Let's start by unpacking all the things in the baggie here and make sure you have all the parts. You should have the two red aluminum extruder parts here, the arm and the base, the steel feeder gear, the PTFE fitting, your tension spring, one longer tapered screw, M3 size, shorter tapered screw, M3 size, M4 lock washer, M4 bolt, the M4 bearing, a brass feeder gear, the bushing for the arm, and four M3 screws, a longer M3 socket cap type screw, and two M3 washers. Depending on the thickness of your mounting bracket will determine which one of these screws you'll use. In this case, and in most printers cases, we'll use the shorter one. And this will go in the corner right here. When you're assembling this extruder on a printer, remember to take into consideration that the filament is going to exit right here. You want to think about that when you're putting this on your printer because you want your bottom tube to exit a certain direction. So now that we have this in place, go ahead and tighten down the short M3 screw. This one uses the two millimeter socket. The next step is put the feeder gear on. I recommend you use the steel one. We include the brass one just as an extra because some people prefer it. But in my opinion, the steel is the best because it's going to last the longest. On your motor shaft, you'll notice that most steppers have a flat spot on the shaft. If you notice on the feeder gear, we have two grub screws. You want one of these grub screws on that flat spot of the motor shaft. When you slide this on, if it doesn't go on all the way, just take your 1.5 millimeter hex wrench and back the grub screws out a little bit. You may have to do this for both. Now that we have them backed off, you can see the feeder gear slid down the shaft and we want to line up the feeder gear with the hole where the filament is going to exit. So right here looks about good. And if you notice, I have my grub screw on the flat spot of the stepper motor shaft. So hold that in place and tighten that down and repeat for the second grub screw. Don't go too crazy on these because you can strip these out. The next step is assembling the tension arm. We're going to put the bearing on and then the lock washer on the M4 screw like so and put this through the bearing. This will need an M3 wrench to tighten it down. Just when you start getting tension on it, that's good. Don't go too tight because what'll happen is if you over tighten this bolt, you'll screw with the bearing and it won't move smoothly. If everything's installed correctly, this should move smoothly and there shouldn't be play in it. Just like we see here. Insert the bushing into the arm and then the socket head M3 screw into the arm. Put your finger here, flip it over, and take one of the included M3 washers and put it on the screw. Take one of the M3 screws and put it into the arm right here. Use your two millimeter hex to snug this up. This is the retaining screw for our tension spring. So making sure we don't drop the washer off, place the arm on the extruder. and then tighten the M3 bolt down. This will use a 2.5 millimeter hex wrench. Again, don't over tighten it, but just snug and the arm should still move free. If the arm doesn't move free, make sure your washer's still in there and then repeat the installation. Now we take our spring, put it over the head of the screw and press it into the extruder. 
we want to make sure that the screw hole here lines up with the inside of the spring because we're going to put a screw through to keep it in place. So just use an Allen key to align your spring. Be very careful that it doesn't fly off and then put another M3 screw through the bottom If everything's assembled correctly, you should have nice smooth motion and plenty of tension. The last step is to install the two bottom screws here. And these will also use the two millimeter hex wrench. Then you can use the included Bowden fitting to screw into the extruder. And I would recommend you take a pair of pliers and tighten this up. Again, do not over tighten this, but it should be snug. And that's it. It's that simple. If for some reason your stock extruder had really long screws and these aren't long enough, you can go ahead and reuse your existing screws from your original extruder. These are just standard M3 holes. But that's it. We've got a nice tight arm here with plenty of spring tension. We've got a steel feeder gear for wear resistance and a new PTFE Bowden tube fitting. Now, as with any other extruder, when you insert filament, you'll notice your filament has a natural bend to it. The first thing you're going to want to do to make feeding filament into any extruder easier is cut it at an angle with your flush cutters. You should have a nice angled tip on the end of the filament. And then what I like to do is I straighten it out a little bit. So just pinch it between your fingers like this until it straightens out. Now instead of a curve, we have a nice straight piece to enter. Now that we have our end clipped off, we can go ahead and insert the filament into the hole on the arm, press the lever, and feed it through. You can see here there's very minimal gap between where it gets fed and enters the extruder body. This is really good for doing flexible even on a Bowden system. My personal recommendation is when you do Bowden and flexible, you use something like our tough tubing that has a tighter internal diameter so there's less slop in your tube. When it comes time to unload your filament, press the arm and pull out quickly. And that's it. Now we've got a nice all metal extruder with a beefy gear that's gonna last a long time thanks to the material being steel. You won't ever have issues with tension because of this nice beefy spring and the all metal construction of the arm, unlike some stock printers extruders that use plastic. And that's all there is to it. It's really that simple. Once you get the new extruder installed, if you're using a factory extruder like the Creality and you move to this one, the E-steps are exactly the same. And the recommended E-steps for this extruder are 95 steps per millimeter. And that's assuming you're running on a 1 16th stepping driver, which is what most of your printers are going to use, including Trinamics running with Stealth Chopper Spread Cycle. So, I hope you guys really like this upgrade. This new extruder version is based on your guys' feedback. You guys told us you would like to see an extruder from us with less gap between the feeder gears and the extruder body so you can do flexibles on it easier. And a couple of people commented how they didn't like the threaded hole on the arm where you could put a PTFE fitting or just leave it open. So that's why we have the tapered hole on the new version. So if you guys have any questions about the product, you can leave a comment below, or you can always email support at th3dstudio.com or give us a call during our business hours at 312-858-8433 and you can press one for sales. Anyways, appreciate you guys. And I really hope you guys enjoy the new products we're coming out with and they make your printing life easier. And as always, happy printing.